record this uh, webinar so basically uh, other people will be able to benefit from it uh, in the future. Um, I appreciate every one of you taking time today to joining uh, this webinar. Uh, the purpose of this webinar is to share the continued learning that we had been having around a, a startup ecosystem. And so, um, you know, the, the challenge that we had been facing, and I'm going to share with you some of the background. Oh, this is the problem, guys. I, please give me one second to deal with this automatic advance of the slides. Um, it seems like that um, we will keep going into the next slide automatically. Um, just one second, transition, apply to all. I can't change it. Just sorry about that, guys. Okay, we'll deal with it. Um, let's start the slideshow and see what happens. Okay. So, the for the past couple of years, uh, almost six years, we have been, um, you know. Uh, working on the digital aspect of a startup ecosystem. Uh, so I'm going to give you some background of that. Um, and then I'll talk about why it matters to look at the digital side of a startup ecosystem. Um, and then we'll look at some of the more academic um, you know, pictures of a startup eco ecosystems, how people have presented them. Uh, and then I will dive into the making digital sense out of it. Um, because when we talk about these ecosystems, there are, these, these are in physical worlds, but then how they can be extended in the digital universe. So just very quickly, IdeaGist is a global network uh, of entrepreneurial communities. We are the largest uh, digital incubation platform in the world, and we basically help early stage people with early stage ideas um, in by providing them a step by step process and connecting them uh, to the available resources in their ecosystem locally and globally. So that is roughly what we do. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Hassan Sayed. I am the CEO of Beer Ventures uh, and also founder of ideages.com. Um, I'm also founding director of uh, the Institute for Innovators and Entrepreneurs um, and many other nonprofit companies um, and I help uh, you know in many different ways uh, to startups all over the world. For the past 20 years I have been um, in business leadership roles. I'm sorry again this is a challenge um, with the Oh my God, I'm sorry. I can't, seems to be getting a point to support me. Okay, um, and I've been for 30 years, as I said, uh, doing technology um, and technology related things. Uh, I'm currently leading a program called Emerging Technology Accelerator, which is helping underserved uh, um, and underprivileged communities with the emerging technologies uh, that are going to disrupt our future. So that's a little bit of me. Idea just as a platform has uh, 50,000, more than 50,000 users who are working on more than 3,000 ideas um, in 350 communities that are spanning all 195. UN recognized countries. So we are the largest platform in various different ways, uh, both in terms of the number of users, number of ideas, number of mentors, number of communities, and number of countries. Let's talk about why. You know, why startups matter um, and why do we care about uh, a startup ecosystem? Um, startups contribute to the local economy uh, in many different ways. Uh, they create employment, uh, they increase the taxation net, um, they offer ways to in, you know, use technologies uh, from outside into the community or you take the technology, develop inside the community to other places. 
um, they basically uh, encourage um, or they use third-party services that creates economic activity cool. within the ecosystem. Uh, they hire people, so they create jobs, and they bring investments from outside. So these are the different reasons why startups are important for an ecosystem. Actually, startups and small businesses create more jobs in an economy than the large companies or mature companies. Um, and that's another reason why a lot of people are focusing on startups all over the world. To give you an idea, um, you know, uh, this is the picture of the um, Soda startup ecosystem. Uh, there are total 12,000 startups. Um, uh, it started uh, in Minnesota during, as you can see, this is the average, um, and roughly as many exits, which means either they were closed or they moved out of Minnesota um, or they were sold out. So it means that the net, net growth in Minnesota is pretty much zero. So then you ask yourself that, you know, how do we increase? There, there seems to be a lot of startups. 12,000 is a big number. But how can we actually make them live longer? Right, that is really the key. If we can make them live longer, then they can create jobs and do all those things. But if they die early or they move away, then they don't provide much help to uh, to the local economy. There is a model that works um, and that increases the survival rate, and that is called an incubation model. Incubation model uh, basically doubles the survival rate of a startups. This is the study by INBIA and uh, Michigan University. Um, and then basically it's taken data from a lot of different programs and came to the conclusion that the startups that get incubated actually have 87% survival rate, um, which is double the survival rate if they were not uh, incubated. So it seems like that we have got a good formula, a good model to um, to do that, but the total um, capacity to help the startups through incubation nationwide is fairly limited. Actually, U.S. produces 140 startups for every 100,000 population every year, which is roughly amounts to 450 to 500,000 startups every year. Incubators and accelerators host an average 20 startups, the national average is 18, and the total installed capacity is 1,500 incubators and accelerators roughly, which basically accounts for less than 10% of the total need. So 90% of these startups really don't have any place to go. And then you would ask, so then how do we help these startups, um, you know, which are living in smaller communities, underprivileged communities, underserved communities, don't have an incubator, you know, how do we get them to, uh, to get the support? So when we look at the, uh, the incubation and we realize that the cost of an incubator um, is roughly $5 million to build, uh, which can provide a capacity of 20 businesses, the cost of capital for the space is $150,000 per year, and the operating losses for the incubator is roughly $200,000 per year. And that money comes from public funding. 87% of the incubators in uh, the U.S. are actually publicly funded in some shape or form. So the cost of supporting 20 businesses for 24 months in an incubator model is roughly $700,000. Unfortunately, majority of the smaller communities, the smaller cities, underserved, underprivileged communities cannot have that kind of money to help the startups in their community. And this basically results in flight of talent and flight of ideas from those communities. This is where we believe digital transformation can have a serious impact. Um, and can actually address some of the issues that we're facing with these startups. Um, and that is the reason why understanding the digital DNA of a startup ecosystem matters, because if we were to augment the local capacity of a startup ecosystem with digital, then we need to understand in depth of what's going on. So that's why we need to 
understand the um, the mechanics uh, or what's in the guts of this ecosystem. So, in most communities, um, if you realize that the ecosystem resources are limited and not evenly distributed, so in the best part of the town, there could be one of the top universities have got an awesome building where they're running an incubator and people who are getting the support through that incubator are limited to the people in the vicinity or within the university. Um, the digital transformation can help in augmenting that capacity. Um, offering digital service can provide a level playing field uh, for everyone. And that is our objective with IdeaGIST. We would like to create a level playing field for underserved and underprivileged and remote communities to be able to incubate their businesses. Let's look at the, um, you know, some of the, the startup ecosystem pictures or how they are uh, presented by academia. Now, please keep in mind that our um, view of the startup ecosystem is a practitioner view, not an academic view. And so I want you guys to first look at the academic view and see what is going on within the academia on how they're defined. They're defining the startup ecosystem. Um, I'm sorry, I can't seem to control this. Um, this is the picture which I think pretty much everybody who has any interest in startup ecosystems has seen it because this is on Wikipedia. So when you go and search for startup ecosystem, this is the picture that you see. Uh, it basically defines the key players in an ecosystem and then the services which are inside this circle. So the big companies, the universities, funding organizations, service providers, research organizations, support organizations, they all come together to basically support ideas, uh, inventions, research, startups, entrepreneurs, and everything else. This is a very good view of how the different bits and pieces are connected. Here is an another, um, you know, picture, and uh, this is um, pretty much, um, you know, the same picture like before, but it basically presents the, the leadership of an ecosystem which comes from economic development perspective. Uh, the economic development perspective is to create jobs and economic activity, and hence making the economic development organization a leading organization to bring all these parties together. Um, but it's still same players, uh, but you can see that in this picture, um, the, you know, the key is um, what you call uh, organization uh, or a company or an entity, not individuals. So the, this is another view. Another view of entrepreneurial ecosystem, this is basically talking about the environment in which entrepreneurial ecosystem grows. Um, it identifies different bits and pieces of the policies um, and frame, um, you know, and, and the environment in which uh, it could happen. So that includes the government policy, the regulatory framework, funding, culture, you know, all sort of different things um, that basically make the entrepreneurial ecosystem grow. Um, this is very interesting picture for especially comparing an ecosystem with others to be able to see how far off or which areas do we have the weaknesses to be addressed. I really like this one. Um, I'm sorry. Oh. Sorry guys, this is uh, beyond my, you can imagine that 30 years of technology experience doesn't help. Um, let's see, I can start the, okay. So I, I really like this um, presentation uh, of the ecosystem. Uh, here, basically, there are specific elements of the entrepreneurial ecosystems uh, that are used in specific activities to create specific outcomes. 
Um, and so you can see, um, you know, how Sorry, guys. Um, I totally apologize for this problem. Uh, so the, you know, um, this is very good to be able to see, bring what together, do what, to get what, right? So it's a, it's a very nice and clean um, approach. Now, regardless of all these frameworks that we look at, these are academic in nature, and they try to look at, um, you know, uh, at the whole picture from a perspective of, uh, uh, you know, um, of um, learning and understanding uh, the, the mechanics uh, for, um, you know, for academia. However, there is a practical aspect of it, a practitioner view of it that we will get into now which is uh, making the digital sense out of it. So few slides. Um, this particular slide actually very, um, you know, interesting for us. This was the aha moment for us to understand how we should be looking at a, um, an ecosystem, a startup ecosystem. How should we be thinking about uh, of a startup ecosystem is in the context of the entrepreneur. Because entrepreneur is the person who is bringing all this together. Entrepreneur is the person who is creating the value. So, oh, I'm sorry, guys. This is very frustrating. So, here, there are specific services bringing a specific value to the entrepreneur. So that was our aha moment and we said, okay, if we are going to build a digital uh, fingerprint or digital DNA of uh, a startup ecosystem, we need to look at the entrepreneur and look at the value to the entrepreneur. So when you look at the value to the entrepreneur, you will realize that when entrepreneur goes in a, in a, in a networking meeting um, if they go in a, you know, in a, in a program, what are they looking for? They're looking for who could be my co-founder or who could mentor me, who could invest money in my company, uh, who can give me an innovative idea that I can, you know, build a business on, who can help me build my company, and where can I find customers? These are really basic questions that the entrepreneur comes. So any digital system that is going to support or augment an ecosystem, a startup ecosystem, uh, they must look at each one of these needs from the entrepreneurial perspective and then understand the mechanics of the transaction between the entrepreneur and these um, different needs. So when we look at that, we realize that there are some foundation level services that an ecosystem provides to everybody. And these foundation level services basically build the, uh, the glue or the channels. Think of them as the, the water channels or things that will bring all the material together. Um, a directory of some kind, uh, some way of looking at the ecosystem. Um, who is who? What are they doing? Um, creating opportunities for people to come together in networking meetups, you know, where fusion of ideas happen, where people come in, talk to each other. Uh, building investor networks, you know, uh, the building of the investor network is not for one startup, it is for the ecosystem. So somebody has to take the leadership to build, um, you know, or bring those investors together, educate those investors on how to invest in startups. Similarly, mentor networks, you know, who are the people that are willing to help these startups? That is an individual, um, you know, um, action but building the mentor network and training them and bringing them together as, as, a, as a group to support the ecosystem. Similarly, work opportunities with the startups, you know, co-founder opportunities with the startups. Um, 
other resources, you know, where people can meet, meeting resources, shared office resources, um, you know, all those community resources coming together. So these are all foundation level services. Not a single person is responsible for this, but as a community we all are. And often different groups in the community take ownership of some pieces. And uh, sometimes there is a lot of, um, you know, uh, stress between the partners because people are trying to do similar things and there is turf war, you know, I am building a mentor network, you're building a mentor network and we are not in good term, on good terms with each other, you know, things like that happen. But this is roughly the foundation level service. There is another, um, you know, um, perspective of the, the, the services that are being acquired and that is the, the new venture creation process. Now this is an entrepreneur taking their idea through the different level of development and maturity and foundation level services are basically providing that environment in which uh, the entrepreneur is able to do that and so combining the foundation services with the services that the entrepreneur needs really creates a full picture of the ecosystem. So we would like, when we are looking at it, we are looking at it um, every single step of the um, entrepreneurial journey uh, of new venture creation process, what entrepreneur needs, and then how that need is fulfilled. So this is the um, you know, and it is work in progress, but guys, please don't think of it as a final, you know, thing. And the statement that basically defines the digi digital DNA of, um, of a startup ecosystem is just there in one sentence. Ideas creating opportunities seized by individuals creating a startups that need resources and services from companies and institutions creating jobs and economic activity in the process. And so to basically build a digital system that can actually support and augment a, a startup ecosystem should look into all these entities and their interactions with each other. So how ideas are shared, how ideas are created, um, you know, how they're turned into opportunities you know, who are the people that are going to work on those ideas or the entrepreneurs and how to prepare those people to take the responsibility of starting up a business um, and then how to support those people in that journey through services and resources which are provided by companies and institutions. So this is the picture, um, you know, that I would like to um, present to you as the uh, to keep in mind when you're thinking about the digital DNA of a startup ecosystem. Now, we had been working on it for the past five years, and uh, you know, for the past three years, we had been extensively looking at the transactions that happen between these entities and how those transactions are happen. We have identified more than 50 services um, that basically are exchanged between different entities. And what we are doing is systematically creating digital transactions. Can you guys hear me? There's some background noise. I hope that you guys can hear me. Hello. Okay. So I will unmute you guys once it is done. So, so far we have identified 50 or so services and we are creating a digital transaction system for each of those services uh, in a systematic way. And this is where our platform is uh, really, really unique um, in which we are facilitating those transactions uh, in a digital environment. So that's um, pretty much uh, was my presentation. Just the point that I want to make 
um, as one of the most important learning of uh, of all what we have been doing that when we talk about digital we are not talking about replacing real world with digital as sometime uh, people allude to that we are talking about digital that means that we don't value the physical in-person interaction between people the reality is that our life is now both digital and real at the same time we do that in you know in unison all the time so when we are talking about the digital dna and using digital systems to support a startup ecosystem we are talking about augmenting real with digital we are not talking about replacing real with digital so that's a important message i you know uh, i feel that we should be um doing this so we did uh, cover the background the big picture uh, inside the startup ecosystems and making sense of the digital perspective uh, there is another reason for us to think digital which i'm not going to cover in our presentation today i'm going to stop here um and basically open for questions um which you guys may have and i'll also open the chat box to see if there are some questions yeah somebody was echoing badly so i muted everybody let me unmute everyone okay everybody is unmuted so now you guys can ask questions or and feel free to type in the chat window okay so i guess um everybody is um thinking a little hard on the questions uh do you want me to quickly just revise the deck so you can just see if you could remember um questions it seems like somebody is on tardis if you guys could i mean i don't know how many of you know tardis okay so um no questions it's fine oh there it is what do you believe is the key role of a digital startup being successful um yes lucas uh, so basically that uh, you know a digital startup no matter what they are providing digitally is still serve the actual need so of um of people who are going to buy that product or service that is being offered so the key role of a digital startup being successful i would say is to address a real need um you know so that's the key um and the sooner you identify that you have a real need or you don't the better off it's going to be um second question uh, in your opinion what is the hardest part about starting a new platform or business um yes uh, it is really really difficult to start something from scratch so um you know the hardest part is imagining how it is going to be when it doesn't exist that you know no matter what you're creating you would have that problem one way to address that problem is to look for similar things look for analogies that basically would help you understand that how similar problems were addressed or sorted out or um, you know in some other area uh and that that is helpful in kind of um you know uh imagining some potential um options um what you have found 
are the barriers to engagement with the digital platform you provide on the part of yes this is um, uh, nascent businesses so this is a major issue guys um, when we started idea just five years ago we started it as a um, as an idea sharing site and it failed miserably because nobody wanted to share their ideas and um, so we came up with a mathematical equation which is basically that the secrecy around an idea is directly proportionate to the perceived value in the idea owner's brain and you can apply it wherever you like it works um, now that particular uh, realization then help us understand or ask the question why people share their ideas and how do they engage with each other uh, in the real world and the answer to that question was trust so you said trust then what is trust um, the trust is a is vicinity between people at the emotional or physical level which means that how close you feel you are to somebody either emotionally or physically this is the reason when people meet normally they try to ask from where you are and then try to immediately think about the people that we know in the place from where they are and that gives us an immediate trust between um, uh, between us so this is the biggest problem um, in building that trust in a digital platform the way how we are addressing it that we try to partner with communities that have a strong uh, program on the ground so people have more reasons to interact with each other in the physical world rather than digital world but the digital world can help enhance it but cannot just jump it started that's a very interesting topic and you know I can talk a lot more about it but uh, Andreas hopefully this answer your question okay so the next question um, Adam what is the key dif what are the key differences between a non-profit startup being successful and a and a for-profit startup being successful and how do you analyze the success or failure so guys I'm gonna tell you something really radical um, this whole thing about a startup success this is all just a hoax there is no success or failure um, in startups literally so let me give you the example um, some companies would say that the startup success is based on how much money they make some would say that a startup success means how long they survive um, some would say startup startup success means how much money they have raised some would say a success for a startup means what kind of difference they have made in this world these are all the different answers it all depends on your perspective of how you are defining the success but ultimately the success of a startup depends on what good they have done in this world and if you take that as the success definition then for-profit and non-profit startups are no different um, and actually a for-profit startup that doesn't know what good they are going to do in this world actually are not going to be successful for the most part so looking at that I think that there is no difference in today's world for-profit or non-profit I would say socially responsible um, organizations and socially irresponsible organizations and within that then you you know what it means um, you know if you're going only for profit and you don't care about the planet you don't care about the people you don't care about uh, the environment okay uh, thanks Adam uh, John can you please give a specific example of how idea this community can assist underserved accelerators with digital absolutely uh, the average cost of running a program which I told you is roughly seven hundred thousand dollar over two years to support 20 startups um, that can vary 
you know, there are programs that are running much cheaper. So within hundred, two hundred thousand dollar per year, um, you know, you can run a decent program uh, to help uh, a number of startups. Um, IdeaGist actually reduces that cost uh, by an order of magnitude. So the you know the um, the specific example of this is here in Minneapolis. We have partnered with an accelerator called 100 Launches, and um, basically uh, you know the program is offered for free. It doesn't cost anything to the entrepreneur. It doesn't take any equity in the in the company. Um, and uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs who could not afford um, to get hosted in an incubator, pay the money for it, or uh, you know, uh, were benefited from this program. Um, the actual advantage of a digital system is to reduce the cost of doing business. That's all what it can do: improve the efficiency, improve the effectiveness, and reduce the cost. And that's how you can make it, um, uh, you know, possible for the underserved and underprivileged communities. Um, if the cost is going to remain high, um, then basically it's not going to do any good um, in those areas. So that's how we think, um, you know, IdeaGist community can assist um, underserved uh, and remote communities. And by the way, John, our program offers completely fully functional, ready, out of the box uh, incubator and accelerator. So all the process, all the procedures, everything is in place. So that also reduces the speed at which a community can launch uh, an accelerator and an incubator. So we basically have had instances in which we launched an incubator and accelerator in weeks like in two weeks, three weeks time, not in months or years. Uh, normally take a year or two for a community to gather all the things uh, and launch an incubator program. Any other question, guys? Somebody is typing. Okay, so I guess um, we're running out of questions. I appreciate everyone. Um, this is not the end of the conversation. This is the beginning of the conversation. Um, please feel free um, to contact me. Uh, my email address, I'll write it down over here. You guys can see it in the chat window. Um, and, um, you know, so feel free to send me a message with your questions afterwards um, or comments. I would request uh, to please provide some feedback on the session that would help us improve it for other people. Um, how did you like it? Did you get what you were looking for? Um, that would be helpful. On the platform where you went and registered for the event, you can also provide a star rating. So you can go back to the same page and you can actually um, rate uh, the, uh, the webinar. So uh, please, uh, if you have time, do that. Thank you, everyone. You take care. Bye-bye.